congenital issue? No. So congenital you're born with. So acquired you can get later on. Congenital you have it in the beginning. So okay. All right. So if you have an acquired condition, it usually happens at or soon after birth. Um, the, there are problems or conditions that are experienced by the newborn during pregnancy or at birth. Um, we don't necessarily know why things are caused. So it's a congenital thing. A lot of times it's an exposure. So maybe that's to drugs or alcohol. Maybe that's to an infection. Maybe that is a perfusion issue that didn't happen because there was some sort of complication. Um, or there might be also like a genetic factor or something we're not aware of. Acquired conditions, they happen afterwards. You might know why, you might not. All right. There's a huge list of these guys. Lots. But I tried to break them up for you. So even though this, this PowerPoint seems longer than normally mine are, um, there's a bunch of these headers in here. So we start out with oxygenation disorders. So we're gonna kind of go by concept a little bit. So when we're talking about oxygenation disorders, the first one we have is meconium aspiration syndrome. How do we know baby is an aspirated meconium? Think back to, to birth. They're not breathing well. They may not be breathing well. Um, what color are they? They may have cyanosis, but they also might have a little bit of staining, like on their fingers or around their mouth. Um, the amniotic fluid, is it clear and nice colored? It's probably gonna have some dark color there. Um, so usually what this happens means is they have inhaled some part of the meconium, so that first stool, um, in utero, and it can cause stress on the lungs. So hypoxic stress, their lungs are really fragile, they're not gonna handle that very well. Um, our big, our big, our big um, sign of this is the stained amniotic fluid, nails, skin, or umbilical cord. Now, there's a lot of reasons this can happen, um, but it's always some sort of stress in utero. So remember we were doing our little feeder heart rhythms and we saw different ones that are hard on baby, like when we're starting D cells and things. Anything that can cause D cells can cause meconium aspiration. Um, Basically, when the baby isn't getting good um, oxygen during um, in the in the uterus, it can pass meconium. It's like a stress response, if you will. So, if they had this, there was probably some complication there. It might be from mom had high blood pressure, kind of like preeclampsia. It could be from cord compression. It could be from um, not having enough amniotic fluid. A whole bunch of different things. But that something stressed baby up. They pooped in the womb, and now we have meconium aspiration syndrome. So they come out, a lot of times they're more barrel, barrel chested. They have a lot of tachypnea. What does tachypnea mean? Fast respiration. Fast respiration. So we already knew they were fast, right? These are even faster. So what's that normal respiration rate? Does anyone remember from last time? 30 to 60. 30 to 60, they're breathing more than 60 times a minute. Do you think that's really sustainable? That's exhausting. I'm exhausted just thinking about it. That's like every second. Um, more than every second. All right, so they're gonna have intercostal retractions um, and expiratory grunting. So if you hear a baby grunting, that is bad. If you hear a little kid grunting, that is also bad. It's with breathing. Cyanosis. And has any of you guys heard this word retractions? Let me get you a picture. Um, I wasn't gonna do this, but I think I need you. 